Hi, welcome back to my channel. I'm Kim, if this is your first time watching. So yesterday, instead of working on my applications, because I'm in my last year of undergrad, I decided that I was going to watch YouTube and I stumbled across Joe Franco's video, 20 Lessons in 2020, and I said, ooh, that's dope. I also would like to share my 20 lessons this year from this year. So in no particular order, these are the lessons that 2020 has taught me. What someone thinks of you is not your business. That one is very straightforward because you are not responsible for the emotions, behaviors, and actions of another adult. These were great lessons. Thank you, 2020. If you don't do the work to grieve properly, the hurt inside of you bleeds onto other relationships. I think this applies to many things, including romantic relationships, like if you don't do the work of grieving your previous relationship with someone, that can bleed onto other relationships that you have in the future. It can also be a platonic relationship with like someone who you were really close to and then they, you feel like they did you wrong and then you just start projecting those emotions onto those other friend onto other friendships and you assume that everyone else is going to treat you that same way so whatever you went through with this person and you didn't really grieve through it you didn't work through it that is then projected onto your other relationships the goal is to follow god our creator and the holy spirit through our intuition not other people or attractions it's kind of straightforward, but it's really hard to do. Yes, God gives us friendships, God gives us different positions and different roles in our life, but the goal is not to follow and stick to these roles and positions and friendships because you might grow out of them. So the goal is to follow God and we will continue to receive these things in abundance as we follow God and our intuition and yes. When there's silence, we can tend to fill the space with negative messages. This one was about social justice, but I think it can also apply to other areas of life in that if someone isn't communicating to you, that space between you two might be filled with negative presumptions like, oh, did I do something? For example, if my sister stops talking to me and doesn't tell me why, I might start to wonder like, was it something I said? Was this something I said? Dreams can be messages. This was a very big lesson in 2020 because I feel like all of my dreams became very vivid and just praying about where these dreams were coming from and what they mean, if anything, and then checking with scripture and see if the dream I had aligns with scripture. That happened a lot this year and I've never been one to discern dreams. So thank you, 2020. <laughs> thank you, God. Next lesson move in authenticity so when social activities and in-person interactions are stripped away from me who am i god does not fit into a box this one is particularly interesting because there might be many different ways that we perceive a creator of the world or of the universe but honestly how can we even conceive who this creator is if we are not god like, there might be a lot of different things that, you know, I don't know. We just don't, there's a lot we don't know about who God is and we just start to learn over time as, as God reveals it to us. Number nine, the way you live your day-to-day -day life is what makes up your year, not necessarily the long-term decisions you make. Number the pages in your journal. So I have this journal and I didn't consistently write in this journal until I numbered the pages because then it became like this really exciting thing to start to think about, well, what's going to happen 100 pages from now? Like, what am I going to be writing about? What am I going to be thinking about? It's worth investing in ingredients for all of the foods that will bring you nourishment and joy. For me recently, that's been acai bowls. I got acai packets, frozen acai packets, so that I can make them at home. So this next one, if it is not in your hula hoop, it is not in your control. Th this is the one that carried me through 2020. If it's outside of my hula hoop, I don't have control over it. And the only thing I can take ownership of is what is in my hula hoop and what I do and how I carry myself and how I respond to people. 
When my body feels like it's carrying a lot of weight, do all of the things opposite of what I think I should do. Sometimes I do end up taking a nap, I'm not gonna lie, but if there's one thing that 2020 taught me, when I really have to do a lot of work and, and I feel like I'm just carrying the weight of the world on my shoulders, I jump around, I do jumping jacks, I dance, I do a lot of different things to really feel like the weight is off my shoulders. You do not have to give life to old versions of yourself to make others more comfortable with who you are. With school shutting down and going back home, sometimes I feel like I morph back into my 16 year old self, but I'm learning that I am growing. It's been like six years since I was 16 and who I was then is not going to be who I am now and that is okay. I don't need to try to go back to who I was to make other people around me comfortable. I can continue to interact with the world according to who I am right now. How they feel about it is not my issue. You're in control of what only you can control. Find ways to ease tasks. Look, let me show you. Why is it that to find garlic, I have to go through onion powder first and then black pepper, pick up garlic powder. Yeah, I found it, but I just wasted like five to 15 seconds of my life that I'm never gonna get back looking for it. So what I learned is I like to not have a cognitive load for things that I would like to enjoy, like cooking. I want to enjoy cooking. So what I did was I created little labels on top of the different spices so that I don't have to manually pick up every bottle and figure out which one is the one that I need. That's on finding ways to make tasks easier to do so that I don't dread them. <laughs> no matter how hard the semester gets, you're better off going to sleep at a reasonable time than staying up late to wake up tired. Working 14 hours on the device is unsustainable. Go do something else. <laughs> Productivity plummets after a certain point. It's unrealistic to expect every day for a body to do work for 14 hours. It feels like that's not good. You don't need to know how long the highway is. You just need to turn on your headlights and look at the first few feet ahead of you. So there was a lot of wondering, when is all of this going to end? Where am I going to be in five years? And honestly, I don't know. I don't know the answer to either of these two questions. So I don't know why I kept thinking about them, but it was useful to think about. Life is a highway. <laughs> Thank you, Rascal Flats. It's useful to think, well, okay, I don't know how long this highway is, but I have the headlights on and all I need to know is what do I have to do next to move forward? Dress up and do your makeup if it makes you feel good, even if you'll only sit in the living room. This one's really fun. I did that today. I dressed up and I feel good and I only sat in my living room. So that's all for my 20 lessons in 2020. I hope you all enjoyed it and maybe it helped. It don't even matter if today was the worst day. Just remember what your kin say that we breathe in, just breathe in, breathe out, and we breathe in, just breathe out. Breathe in.